Hello YouTube, uh, thank you for your interest in this video and for clicking on a video for home improvement, how to add a um, attic fan when you have an attic vent and you don't want to have to make a cut into your roof to install a new fan through the roof. There's another way to do it, which is to get a fan, that will, a round fan that will install right underneath the uh, vent that you already have in your roof. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take this quiet cool fan out of the box and get it into the attic. Um, in my comments section here at the bottom, there's going to be a link to a video from the manufacturer of this particular fan which really shows you in good detail how to attach it to a wood frame and gives you a great start on how to install this fan. It's called a Quiet Cool AFG ES1500. But uh, my video should give you some more tips um, or just some example on the real world installation of it in a not easy to work in environment, also known as the average attic of most American homes. All right, we're back. Um, found out that we can still make the ladder work over there um, without having to get some new pieces of wood. But uh, welcome to my attic. Isn't it just uh, lovely up here? You might notice that there's no uh, blow in insulation, there's a few. Not even that many, but just a few uh, remnants of the blow-in insulation, that yellow, yellow stuff right there. And that's because we specifically contracted with a restoration company to remove it. Um, it's been in here since 1998. Now it's 2016. So that stuff was pretty nasty. It was making us feel really bad. And we didn't have very good... Uh, that's going to suck. We didn't have a very good air barrier or air sealing seal it s-e-a-l between the attic area and the living area so we're still experiencing some nasty attic toxic air coming down into the house but it is much better since we've had that stuff removed and also um my lighting is probably all messed up my apologies um we had them uh do a service that they give which is to use foam to seal as many of the cracks between the barrier of the attic area and where you live. So, you know, we're up here in the attic now and uh, one thing I mentioned earlier is that in a very good situation you have enough ventilation coming from the bottom of the attic, kind of your ceiling, through soffit vents, through gable vents, anything towards the bottom that should let the air go up towards the holes in the roof, which are the exit vents. So it is quite common in modern houses that there are uh, obstructions in the soffit vents, not enough soffit vents, um, and what have you. So you get this situation where the attic can become extremely hot in the summer, and it also can become extremely humid. So um, add that to the materials that are often used, such as the fiberglass, uh, insulation and just the dust that can accumulate through the smaller holes of uh, 18 years of cars going by and construction happening all around but the dust can, that can accumu accumulate up here and uh, put that all together and you can have uh, quite a toxic feeling in an attic. Um, you do not want that feeling to come out of the attic into your house. So why are we doing this whole thing with adding this fan up here? It's to try to alleviate that, to make it better. It's already a lot better than it used to be. But we're hoping this will also uh, keep it cooler. Um, and you can see behind me, that is the access from the garage where I was earlier up here into the attic. Um, when it's open, Man, I feel this nice, cool breeze blowing right up out of there, right up onto me. And of course, it's going towards those exit vents up at the top. But, do I spend uh, most of the time with my garage door access hatch open? No. 
Um, as a matter of fact, in the summers, when it was really hot here in Texas, I have kept it open at different times just to let more airflow up through. The right way to do it is to have enough airflow coming through your soffit vents that are lo supposed to be located all along the edges of the roof line. And a lot of the houses in this neighborhood do have gable vents as well. My house doesn't have any. I'd have to cut through some brick to make them, and I might do it. But uh, we're going to see how things go after we have the extra airflow going out with the addition of this new fan. Turn my headlight back on. And uh, so, <laughs> yeah, you know, if you've never been up in the attic, this is what you're dealing with. You can only step on the studs. Um, I would highly suggest if you've never done it, practice walking around up here before you try to carry anything carry anything up here because it can be a little treacherous and even the pros fall through this sometimes. Uh, originally this fan is marketed and sold as a gable fan which would mean that it would be sitting horizontally against a wall. I'm going to be installing it upside down into the roof decking um, which is kind of different, but uh, I've seen it done. I've seen a couple other videos where people have done it. I'm going to add a bracket onto one of the uh, joists that's going to attach to the fan, and I'm going to use shorter size screws, a wood framing around it, and it'll come out completely secure. So I hope I don't get in trouble <laughs> for doing something differently than uh, you know what certain people expect you to do. Okay, so this is the next part of the job. We have made our oh, relaxing trip to Home Depot, picked up a couple things, including that roll of uh, two rolls of 25 foot Romex, a junction box, as well as a switch for the wall downstairs, and uh, a couple other little doodads. But the next step is going to be to add this junction box into an existing line like one of these white wires just strewn all about they're all carrying electrical lines so um, we're just going to add the junction box and wire it up to the fan the fan arrives like this and we're going to test it out to make sure that the airflow direction is what we want up and out the attic rather than the other way around um, everything described including calling to the company had it that way so we're going to get that wired up and give it a test. Okay, next we're going to have a really brief segment on installing a electrical junction box. And let me tell you, when you're trying to identify which wire you want to tap into, it is so helpful to buy this thing that I just bought. Um, it's in my back. Pocket. Front pocket now. This is a uh, non contact voltage tester. When you're a DIY guy and you don't have one of these, which I didn't have till today and I've done so many times, what you do is you turn off fuses at your breaker box and um, then you go to different outlets and switches around your house and you turn them on and off and you try and go back and forth and figure out which fuse at your panel controls which outlet or switch. Well, that's helpful if you're trying to tap in downstairs um, where you can see the electrical box where you want to tap into. But when you're up here in the attic and you only see thing you see is wires, well, I started off trying to use that old method, which does work, but also is a bit of the pain in the backside um, and I wound up just saying to myself look go to the depot get one of these um, you turn it on and if a wire is hot it just beeps and tells you then if a wire is not hot and you touch it to a not hot wire which I've made this one not hot as you'll see, it doesn't do anything. It just it lets you know that it's still uh, it's off. 
so my wife and I did this thing where, you know, I got the, found the wire I wanted to use. You got to make sure you choose a wire that does not have a, a switch in front of it so that you always have power at that wire. And then, you know, we did this thing where she went down the line of fuses and called out off and I called out hot. And then she would check the next fuse and uh, until she got to the one that we needed. She called out next fuse and I said good that's the one I need leave it off because I'm going to cut it in half just like that. So we've cut this in half and when you install the junction you just screw it in to the wood right there um, and you're going to wire up the two wires to a third or fourth uh, to a second and third wire which are going to go back to the fan and the switch to turn the fan on and off downstairs. Okay. So when you're working with Romex wire, um, there's really just one tool that you need, and that would be a good pair of needle nose pliers. The part that um, you use to work with the Romex is right in here, the cutter. So, you know, you're going to cut back, maybe use a knife to strip off the outer sheath, and then you use the uh, cutter part of the needle nose pliers to strip back the inner sheath on each of the copper wires. So, I've already taken off the white plastic around the white copper. Then you have the black one and in the middle you have your ground wire that sometimes has paper around it and paper is easy to strip it back. Uh, when you're working on the Romex, if you haven't done it very much, definitely practice a bit on the new piece of Romex because the old piece back over that way um, the original piece might be kinda tight and then you don't want to get in a situation where you just need you keep cutting back on the one that's tight and uh, you run out of space so you can just cut as many times as you want from this new roll because it's gonna have plenty of slack um, so let me go ahead and do the black one so you can see how you do that put it right in there and then very gently go around in a circle with just real gentle pressure so if you use too much pressure of course you're going to want to cutting the copper inside and let's see how we're doing now Roll it around with gentle pressure until you see it starting to separate. Then you can grab it with the top. Bam, it's off. Nice, clean. Ready to connect up. All right, now we're looking at the junction box with the um, stripped Romex all around it. Um, this side here to the left is the side that continues along the original line. The side over here to the right, the three uh, pieces of copper wire inside is the side that comes back from the fuse box. And this one coming into the bottom is where I decided to put the new piece of Romex that's for the new service for the fan. Um, so these two were cut and this one is being added and of course we added the junction box to the uh, joist of the, uh, the, the woodwork of the roof structure. Um, all you got to do is connect up all the whites to the whites, the blacks to the blacks, and the bare 
ground wires to each other too. And then once you finish them, you're going to put a nut, a wire nut to keep them together and wrap the bottom with a little bit of electrical tape. Um, there will be one more wire coming through this box, but it doesn't need to attach to any of these. That's going to be the wire that is fed by the other side of this. So this is going to go to a switch. It's going to be wired into a switch and then off that switch is going to be another wire that comes all the way back from downstairs up through here. Same wire, it's not going to have any breaks in it. It's going to go up into where the fan is going to be up there. Okay, so now we've got um, the wires all put together and this is where the other end of the needle nose pliers which is just like the most cool tool to use it's just made for doing Romex and of course you can do so many other things with this tool uh, I love this particular tool so the needle nose end is used when you twist these together and you just twist them it took me, I'm not a pro at it, so it took me so long I didn't want to film uh, my process of doing it. But I put the black wires together and I put some electrical tape around that and then I put the wire nut on top of it. Then I did the ground wires, put them together, put a different color wire nut. And um, finally I finished up with all three of the white wires in here. And you can see the twisting, the braiding. You just start with your fingers and then you move on to using these and slowly get them to come together uh, you might want to cut off the tops if they, if some of them got too long I'm going to do that right now and uh, top it off with one of these and you've got a new wire coming out of the old ready for a new service All right, I'm back and now uh, I'm ready to attach the fan to the roof. So here goes, we're gonna climb up this ladder. Never get on a ladder unless you feel 100% confident that you have uh, stability and safety for yourself on that ladder. Uh, we're gonna climb up the ladder. I've uh, decided to, we don't need a full box framing. We just need two slabs of wood that I've cut down 15 inch pieces with a hacksaw um, to mount onto the roof decking. The reason I didn't use a frame or anything in this time is my roof decking is only three eighths of an inch thick. That's less than half an inch thick. And I've got to use, I really wanted to use one inch long wood slash drywall screws, but uh, I could only find the smallest size was one and one quarter inch coarse thread screws so I'm just gonna go with the one and one quarter inch screws that came with the fan um, so I didn't need to buy any new screws but um, it's the next day and I spent so far a total of about mm, including two trips to Home Depot <laughs> total of about five hours uh, yesterday and I'm thinking the rest of this, uh, which does involve a little bit of drywall cutting to put the screw, uh, to, to put the uh, switch in, is probably going to take another whole rest of the afternoon since we've gone through uh, the day part where I had to take care of the family and go out to a birthday party and things like that. So it's probably just going to go all into the night to, uh, to finish up this fan job. So let's go up this ladder. Flip my headlight back on. Okay. So I'll be putting the fan to uh, the camera down in a moment. 
there's where she's going to go. I'm um, going to put one strip of wood on the top, one strip of wood on the bottom. There's four tabs to go through. Uh, first I'm going to secure the wood to the roof decking. Then I'm going to go through the tabs and uh, have finished product. I did test it out last night um, just to a, to a hot circuit down there in the, on the landing down there. I just tested it out. The air blows the right way. It's a quiet fan and it feels really nice. Um, today it's very hot and humid and sticky. Uh, the sun decided to come out today. We've been having a lot of rainy weather in Texas. But, um, boy, I hope this will cool off the attic some. All right, I put my first screw in with that little uh, <laughs> cordless screwdriver from Ikea, and it would not pass mustard. It more like cut the cheese. Um, so I'm going to have to use the power corded drill and... Um, Mine's quite old. I've only I've only done a maintenance on it one time, and it dates back to 2001. But uh, I thank my mom for getting that for me. She's the one who told me that I can do stuff and um, encouraged me to build a doghouse <laughs> all those years ago. So I have to say thank you, mom, um, and bless your heart up there. So I'm going to go back up there and finish screwing it all up together with the corded drill. There's just a little tip there. If you're working with a corded drill on a ladder, you can tie off your extension cord through one of the holes at the top of the ladder so you're not always dealing with the weight of that cord. Um, it might help you a lot. Okay, so this is the junction box or the connection between the fans wiring coming through that metal cable to the soon to be added cable that's going to go down into the house. I just wanted to point out a couple things that I think I understand about electricity. So, um, there's a black wire, a white wire, and a green wire, and in this case there's a red wire which we can disregard because it's just because I purchased a different type of Romex that has a red wire on it that will not get used for this work at all. Um, everything else can just serve its purpose. From what I understand, the way household alternating current electricity works is the black represents the hot and that means it is wired to the panel um, and you think of it in terms of a flow of a circuit so the panel the electricity leaves the panel on the black and um, flows through to your device and then back out of your device on the white which is called the neutral so from the panel on the black to the device from the device to the panel on the white. Um, that would mean that if you want to put switches in somewhere, you would put them in on the black. And you want to have the, the white be available always for when that switch gets turned on to go back. Um, anywho, there's a little green nut in there. I don't know if you can make it out. And that little green nut is where you attach the bare copper wire, the ground wire. Um, I do not fully understand why it's important to ground the metal box. Um, my level of understanding is you just got to make sure that your device is grounded and I don't know why in addition to making the green wire ground from the device touch the bare wire from the cable. I don't know why there's the additional requirement or necessity to add the uh, uh, attachment to the box with that little green nut. But there you have it. The, the fan's been put up and the junction box has been put up and we are going to roll on ahead. Okay, there's the fan up there doing its thing. It's connected to a temporary uh, 
circuit all the way just coming hot from the panel. All right, the next part of this job was locating where to drill a pilot hole through the top plate or sill plate of the wall that goes down into the wall cavity uh, directly above where we want to place our switch in the house. So we wanted to place our switch right next to the thermometer and uh, the thermostat that controls the air conditioner. And um, what I did is I roughly guessed where it was. And then what you can do is you can find the thermostat control lead, which is this case, it was a brown wire that led all the way back to the air conditioning unit. Once it was located, it's pretty easy to see. This is definitely where to drill that hole. Uh, used a 5 16 wood cutting drill bit, uh, put it on Mama's drill, and made that hole right there. Then we threaded through the two new wires. So what we have here is the new hole that we're going to put in our new box, blue box, old work box, real handy thing here. You just slop it in there and then open up the top and bottoms and uh, it'll connect itself to the drywall. Really cool, love the design of these little boxes. And anyway, so here's our two new leads that we threaded through. The black one, marked with a little piece of tape, is the one that's coming from the panel. And the one that's dangling is the one that's going to go to the fan. Oh boy. Um, well, if you've never worked with drywall, it's a little bit intimidating at first, but all you need is a drywall saw and an X-Acto knife and a good vacuum cleaner. Wipe it down when you're done and you can have a really easy, clean job of doing this. You just uh, mark where you want to make your cuts based on the thing that you're going to insert into the wall. So I just put this against the wall, marked it, and then use an X-Acto knife or what they call utility blade. Basically, you know, your razor blade on a stick. Um, make as deep a groove as you can around the outside of it. And then come back in with that drywall saw. And uh, I'm thankful to someone along the line who taught me how to use drywall saw just by telling me, point it towards where you want it to go, hit it on the back, and it'll go into the drywall, then start sawing. Uh, it's a real simple tool. Until you hold one and you do it, uh, you've never done it. So um, that's it. We're going to install the switch now. Uh, connect up the wires up top and have a fan. So here it is, the final product. Um, we have a little switch right by the thermostat. Turns off. Turns on the attic fan. And we've had it up there a few days now. It's doing a great job of making the uh, attic environment less toxic, uh, pulling air through the, albeit, um, under ventilated soffit vents and lack of gable vents. There are soffit vents up there and it is pulling through uh, some, some air through there. Uh, it's keeping it cooler. This has been a pretty cool spring, early summer here in Texas this year. So um, it hasn't been that necessary yet, but uh, I imagine it will be uh, in the near future as we get into June and July. Um, a couple years ago, the highest temperature that I recorded in our attic was 123 degrees. So it does get really hot up there. Some contractors did explain to me that they saw sweating from the joists, which is indication that it gets uh, overheated. And um, the air is just a little bit cleaner too because now we have uh, an updraft of air and not a downdraft of air coming from the attic into our house. And the real goal for our family is to have a healthy and clean house.
So um, when you're doing DIY jobs, everything you need to know, you already do know, or you'll learn along the way. Uh, have fun and um, go out there and do what you need to do.